so uh, for those of you who don't aren't very familiar with my work or my paintings and what I do in my process, um, all of my paintings start as a photograph that I took uh, in my adventures around the world. <laughs> so I, you know, when we're when we're on vacation or when I'm just, you know, my day to day life, I if I see something cool, I whip out my my iPhone and just take a picture. Um, so one of my favorite things to do is, uh, you know, well, before COVID um, was my my cousin Alex and I, which yes, I have a cousin named Alex. <laughs> and I was I was very upset with him when he was born and they named this baby Alex and I wanted that to be my name. But that's that's beside the point. Um but now my cousin Alex and I are, are we're really good friends and he's super supportive of my identity and it means a lot to me to have family, you know, who support you. Um so we're both named Alex. So Alex and I um something we used to do fairly often, we'd get lunch and then we would walk around some um, you know, antique mall, like local antique mall around town. And, and uh, a lot of my paintings are photographs that I took inside antique malls. Um, I don't touch anything. I don't move anything. I just, I just take a picture of the way things are, the way that, you know, the people at that work at the antique mall or the people who rent the booths, the way that they posed things. Um, and I feel like that lends some like, you know, authenticity, if you will, to the piece. Uh, so, so, this day I was with Alex and I came across, across this booth that was full of uh, Fisher Price, vintage Fisher Price toys from like the eighties, um, maybe the late seventies. And something about this, I was just like, oh, that's cool. A, a lot of my paintings are about like, you know, uh, childhood and nostalgia. And, um, and so this piece really spoke to me at the moment, um, but, and so, so, you know, I, I took the photo and I just put it in my folder and I just kind of forgot about it. And so then, you know, time goes by and, and me and, you know, Rachel and Sayer, and we're all talking about, okay, it's time for the telethon again. And, uh, you know, this year, Rachel, you know, you wanted me to, to do a, a live painting. And so I was like, okay, I wanna paint something cool. I wanna paint something that has meaning to me, something I'm excited about. And I started going through my, my folder of uh of photographs that i took from you know and uh i came across this photo that i took that day with my cousin um so this was back in like i guess 2016 maybe 2017 um and i really hadn't looked at this photo ever since um so i look at this photo again and it's you know how you haven't looked at something in a while and the photo hasn't changed but you've changed that's what this was like for me. I saw this photo through the lens of what 2020 has done to all of us and brought into our lives. And so uh, I thought I would talk about the symbolism and maybe it's obvious to me, but and maybe I put too much meaning <laughs> into my paintings. Um, but I wanted to share with you guys what I see and what this painting means to me. So uh, are you much into symbolism, Rachel? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, I'm like all good trans people and queers. I've got my, <laughs> I've got my degree in uh, literature and, and what have you. So yeah, symbolism, definitely something. And I mean, paintings like this don't really mean much if they don't mean something to the person that created them. So I would honestly be kind of shocked if it didn't have too much meaning for you or what have you. I mean, you're not Thomas yeah. Kincaid here. You're actually trying to make something. Don't speak of him. We shall not. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sure some people love Tim Thomas Kincaid, but I just, it makes me want to vomit in my mouth just a little bit. But uh, okay. Well, so the, in the first thing I'm going to talk about is in there's um, it's a toy clock. And so for me, obviously, a toy, a clock represents time and how now time has, is marked as before COVID in the year of 2020, before COVID and after this notion of, you know, after COVID, um, what our lives became once COVID was affected everything. Um, and this, this sense of a loss of time um, that, you know, and how we use our time during this quarantine. Um, 
so, you know, yes, it's, it's, it's a happy, fun toy clock, but for me, it represents what COVID um, has done to our sense of time. And, you know, we don't get to spend time with our loved ones the, the way that we used to, um, you know, and how we use our time, like I said. And so then that leads me into uh, across the painting, um, which I know it's not very done yet. It's what I'm working on right now. Um, it's a toy workbench. It's uh, so there was there was like it's a little toy workbench and there would be this little plastic hammer and these little um, wooden like nails and screws. So you would screw in the nails and you would hammer on the on the little wooden net nails, and, uh, you know, that they so they would go in these pegs. Um, so it's, it's a toy workbench. And I had one of those uh, at my grandma's house that I used to play with. So for me, this workbench, especially in combination with the clock is during this quarantine, um, you know, during this pandemic, our, our mentality has had to shift about what it means to be, um, to work and to find employment or keep employment. Um, and especially for me personally, I really had to think about and like reassess what working meant and to not necessarily tie my productivity as a person with myself, with my own personal self-worth um, that, you know, we are, we as humans have worth regardless of how much we produce and how busy we are and how much we get done. Um, does that, does that make sense? It does, and and I'm like, it, it's at a different angle, but I see. Uh, I mean, given the nature of the show we're running, I mean that workbench certainly, it, it's fairly transcoded in terms of the work we do on ourselves. Um, oh, and, I like that. Yeah. Uh, I can definitely say from my non-binary perspective, like the fact that it is a toy workbench, and and kind of the the play and the safe experimentation that goes into that like you know i i did not emerge as my current self uh mm -hmm. effortlessly or on the first try so mm -hmm. there was there was definitely a need voice. for experimentation and being able to do that in a safe and nurturing environment which i mean honestly mtug helped a lot there uh, just the yeah. building on yourself and and practice and refinement and that nothing starts at the level of a master work you always start as a child yeah yeah i mean i you know that's pers the idea of like personal growth and then how that's tied to like you know productivity and change and i really yeah thank you right i really i appreciate that i like that a lot you're welcome um so Next, I'm going to move on to what I feel is fairly uh, obvious, I think, if, you know, in the whole thing is this wooden toy vehicle or car or truck that says emergency squad on the side of it. And the, the, the main reason I wanted to do this painting um, is because that emergency squad vehicle is in the forefront. And, and to me, like, that's what's most important throughout this entire, you know, pandemic is our healthcare system and the doctors and nurses who who stepped up and took care of us and our loved ones and you know Dr. Fauci <laughs> and all of the leaders who you know through their like time and wisdom and and knowledge um, are are doing their best to help us through this um, you know so I, I consider this painting like like a thank you letter, like a love letter to all of our, you know, nurses and doctors. And I have an, uh, quite a number of friends who are who are nurses and doctors who are, you know, putting their lives at risk um, to to help people and you know affected by COVID. But then also, like you know, there are a lot of people in our in our personal community who uh, you know aren't doctors or nurses, but definitely give their time and and love and effort towards helping other people through this pandemic. Like MTUG, we have our pantry and, you know, all the M our volunteers, you know, who every week they show up and they help the, fulfill those pantry orders. And, you know, we have 
volunteers who run our deliveries to so that you know our the members of you know MTUG people who need food and who need assistance during this time you know can can get the help that they need to survive um so that's you know part of what MTUG does one of the reasons why we need you know this this telephone means so much is so we can continue to provide that support to the people in our community who need it um so last but not least uh <laughs> there's a a blatant nod to uh, our LGBTQ plus community. I have this, there's, you know, and I didn't put this in the painting. It's, it's just what was there the day I took the photograph is this stack of rings that are the colors of the rainbow, um, which obviously for me represents diversity and the beauty of our communities and how during this time we all, we will get through this together. Uh, you know, through the strength and, and, you know, of our communities. And I know that we're all separated physically right now, but, you know, we're, we still have one another. And I think, you know, our relationships have changed and, you know, but, and who, you know, who we spend our time with may have changed, but, but our communities, I feel, are what will help us get through this time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And the fact that it is a, a children's toy, or in the case of those rings, it's it's an infant's toy. That's, that's like and, a toddler, yeah. yeah. And for kids that age, like their toys, as fun as they are, I mean, at least as far as my two and observing them, were also a source of comfort. Like it was a thing that made them happy and feel safe and secure. And in its own way, like that's that's what our community is. We, we look out for each other. We take care of each other. Yeah. We give that comfort and safety and security and just that feeling of being okay um, yeah 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 so uh you know the the whole painting for me it's like i didn't set out to even make a painting about 2020 <laughs> that's that's not at all actually what i had planned i was going to just do something happy and colorful and and rainbow and lgbt and then i found this this photo i took that day all those years ago and i was just like oh wow um so yeah, so uh, we are gonna be, I'm gonna be fin finishing this painting and uh, a little reminder for anyone who didn't see the intro um, this morning, um, we're going to be accepting donations, obviously, um, <laughs> throughout this telethon, but anyone who donates $50 or more is automatically entered to win, to, to win this painting. Um, so, you know, I'm gonna, bust my hump <laughs> and uh, finish this. And then tomorrow morning, I think you said, what, what time did you say we were going to be drawing the winner's name? Oh, we're, we're targeting around 10 a.m. What? I mean, we could go I a little. To, I get we, I, I, I'm getting up. Okay, I will be awake. <laughs> okay, I, we, if we do 10.30, I mean, 11. We can push that back a, a little. Oh, I, I bet. It'll be fine. I, I'll be It'll awake be too. Fine. We're all awake. <laughs> it's fine. Yes, but yeah, a chance to win this this meaning rich and and impactful piece from professional artist. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, it'll be it'll be really good, and I'm excited. And once I've had some coffee tomorrow morning, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna read a, a children's book. Um, that, that has, yeah, I thought that maybe some of our younger viewers would enjoy. So I'm going to read a little children's book and then we're going to draw the winner of this painting. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, that sounds absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for, uh, letting us back into your studio. We'll check in with you down the line and, uh, everything's looking great. Can't wait to see the finished product. Thank you, Rachel. I can't wait to show you guys.